uh, uh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I thank God for bringing us once again, uh, uh, for giving us the opportunity to gather for digging deep. Uh, shall we pray? Everlasting Father, King of Glory, we thank you for this evening. Uh, thank you for your sons and daughters who are gathered here. Thank you for the obedience, your instruction to dig deeper into your word and to show us our proof. But as we begin to dig deeper into your word, we pray your servant to us this evening, Lord, in Jesus' name. All that we learn, the grace to apply them in our lives and to run with them, come and give us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answered prayer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, once again, we are welcome to dig in deep and I uh, want to thank God for uh, the provision, the, the guidance, uh, the bread uh, that we take in effortlessly in and out, you know, without paying for, for it. It's, it's the the benefits that we receive every morning. The masses are new every day. So I want to bless God for all of this. Uh, his name be magnified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. It's a bit of flu, but <laughs> Lord, help me in Jesus' name. So, uh, in, in the actual fact is that I was preparing for the wrong uh, lesson, and five minutes ago I realized I was, I was preparing for lesson 146. I don't know why. I, Jump to one four six and we went to do one for three, one for three. So, uh, nonetheless, we we'll do the normal one, the one for three. And I, uh, I crave your indulgence. I may be slow with the Bible verses because I now have to check them now. But the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Uh, that was an oversight on my part. I think I was so excited when I saw power and authority, and I thought that was what we are diving into. <laughs> but we'll be, we'll be jumping to that in about three weeks. So, uh, the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So. Uh, for the last few weeks, we've been looking at um, the topic "Don't Be Left Behind," and we, we concluded the last week. And uh, uh, that that last week's teaching was a fitting way, you know, to conclude the series because it highlighted the conditions. And uh, uh, I will have put it now: the hindrances to entering the kingdom. You know, for the first two lessons, we looked at what those times would be. You know, you know, there's so much pain that people have to endure. You know, so much chaos that happened. You know, but but in, in concluding the series, we looked at you know, you know, what are the conditions? And the first one is that we must be born again, and uh, we must be holy, and we must witness for Christ. And the most important one is is for us to you know to have the extra oil that that's that's to be ready to be prepared. You know. You know, to be ready at all times because I, I, Jesus will return back and, and that coming back as we compare to the fact that to be like a thief in the night. You know, and is that comparison that analogy, you know, means it's going to be sudden, it's going to be unprepared, you know, it's not going to be on, it's not going to be announced. So it will come unannounced and we need to be ready. May God give us that sustaining grace in Jesus' name. So we looked at uh, what are the indices talked about love of money. A lot of things today are wrong because people just want to acquire money at all costs. Of course, money is good, you know, you know, money is a defense. We're talking about the love of money. When you love money more than God, it becomes an issue. And you know, it can only lead, you know, to you know to several, you know, sins. And also, you know, if you're facing the saving grace, some have witness they have been witness on to people have preached to them but they refuse to accept Christ they refuse to open the doors of their hearts you know and so that can be an hindrance also is you know, to, to refuse the will of God the will of God is important you know, you know sometimes people as Christians you know we need to chase the permissive will and we see how Balaam you know, pay dearly for that you know when they are express instructions and you try to play by the rules you know you can hear things like uh, 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 you can bend the rule but don't break it. You know, it's, it's, it's wrong. Partial, you know, obedience is, is disobedience. Partial obedience is disobedience. And so we must, you know, act into his words and, you know, fulfill his will. 
the Lord help us in Jesus. And so today we are moving into that new topic. Uh, it's a three-part series, The Sorrow of a Black Backslider. The Sorrow of a Backslider. And so today we're starting with part one. Sorrow of a Backslider, part one. Uh, the African has a full proof and until a woman has tried two husbands, she will not know that one that is preferable to the other. You know, sometimes <clears throat> we don't value what we have until we lose it. You know, and we think, oh, uh, the grass is greener on the other side. You know, and, and sometimes as Christians, you know, we have this kind of ideas like, ah, look at X, Y, Z, the life, the life is better. Uh, and I'm serving God and my life is not better. And you begin to make comparisons, you know, things that are not, you know, you need to think of things that are not even rooted in the world. In fact, you don't even know what those, that person is going through or dealing with. And that's why there's that magazine that all that glitters are not, you know, gold. And so you see someone from afar, drives a nice car, you mean to, uh, ah, this person, has, his life is so good. I'm not serving the same Jesus. And so it's important for us, you know, to, to take perspective on these issues. And, and that's why I learned in the Lord, you know, when writing this, started, you know, by reminding us of that proverb, a woman who has, who, who, until a woman tries to husband, she will not know which one is preferable. You know, until a man has tried two lives, one without Christ and the other in Christ, you will not know the difference. You know, you will not know uh, which is which until you, you probably you know, live the two lives, you know. You know, there, I think there was, uh, I was listening to a politician years ago and he was asked what was his, you know, biggest, you know, moment in his life. He had so much pain and he said the, the day he waited for a, 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 his uncle, I think a family member to pick him up from school in London and that. Uh, the, the, the man kept him stranded for hours. <laughs> and people were like, really? That was the worst day of your life. You know, someone like that cannot appreciate, you know, when people are poor, what they go through. And, you know, you are a leader and you don't have that appreciation of, you know, what poverty is because you are not experienced it. You know, so sometimes if, if, if you are in the world and you have not experienced Christ, you think the world is the everything. It, you think that that's all that is to life. You know, you are, you are free to party, to club, you know, to do all sorts of things. And you think that's the end. That's where life starts and ends. I remember my dad used to tell me in those days, they were so, you know, after they are drunk, you know, they would tell themselves, that when Jesus is angry, he just throw me and I will end up after behind the fire. You know, you know, he's so angry at what I've done. So instead of me going, going to the lake of fire, I would just go behind and I would now cross. And those are things that people tell themselves when, when they think what they do is the end of it, you know, because they are not experienced a better way. You know, when, you know, when you, you have, I mean, there's another problem when you have not gone to another person's farm, you think your dad's farmland is the biggest. The point is, is if you have not experienced a life in Christ, you think that life you live is the best. That's why it's important, you know, to encourage, to witness to others so that they can have that experience. And I know when my daddy speaks these days, he laughs and and he says it is, you know, it, there's, there's a way, there's a word he uses in Yoruba, a that the, the translation is uh, the blindness of the spirit. You know, he sees those things as ignorance and those things because he now knows there's a, diff, a better way because he's not, he now he not has a life in Christ. But what they saw it to be to have lived in the glorious liberty that is Christ and then go back into the world. So you can blame, you, you, you probably can, you know, can pardon the ignorance of someone who had not experienced Christ and who will speak ignorantly of the things of God, you know, when, when he sees the power of God manifesting, who will mock it, you know, because that person has no understanding of the things of God. You know, you can, you know, forgive that ignorance, you know, you can probably overlook it and ah, this person does not know what is is, is, is is happening. But what about someone who has you know lived in the light, you know, at you know come from darkness into the light, so uh, uh, now uh, has the understanding of what it is to live in the light, knows all of the wonderful advantages 
that comes to living in the light and then things for one reason or the other i'm going to go back into darkness that that's quite a, quite sorrowful you know you know you think what is happening here you know who takes that it, it, it takes you know it's not rational let me put it that way to experience you know light and say you desire darkness and you begin to wonder what is happening you know that was why jesus was saying in luke chapter 9 verse 62 that what jesus said to him no one having uh no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of god you know there's a, there's just there's a difference to knowing about god and then willingly going back into the other way there's a difference between that and not having known god you've not known god you think that w- that way you, you know you do things is the best way of doing things because you are in that ignorance of the way of light and, and so that's that's why it's, it's important for us as christians to be careful so that we don't you know you know toil and walk in the light and then by our actions we go back into darkness you know this is this is this is a, a choice that people make it's not like i was pushed is a choice we make by your actions and inactions to say okay i'm a, I, I, i've given my life to christ I'm now walking you know my salvation with, with, with fear and trembling and none of a sudden because of what i asked for god i didn't get because you know i'm dealing with this you know and then i walk back into darkness but that that will be a portion in jesus name so it's a sorrow a sorrowful thing to have understanding of the light to have experience of the light and then choose to go turn back to darkness so that's why uh, that is saying may never happen to you in jesus name this series of studies is to know the sorrows of such a backslider so we're going to look at very you know, just two uh outlines two, two sub teams here the first one is the life of a sinner is a wretched one don't go back to it the life of a sinner is a wretched one don't go back to it the life of a sinner is wretched and a terrible one and that's why the bible you know says in isaiah chapter 57 but the wicked are like a troubled sea when it cannot rest whose waters cast up my and death that's in verse 20 in verse 21 says there is no peace says my god for the wicked job chapter 15 verse 20 says wicked man reads in with pain all his days and the number of years is eating from the oppressor in uh, uh psalm chapter 107 psalm 107 verse 17 says fools because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities we are afflicted and don't forget we are looking at what we are looking at today is the sorrow of a black slider we're talking about those who, who, who already have the understanding of the ways of god who not choose to return to darkness so you you will expect that they've compared both of us they know they, they know the, the, the light you know that the, that that happens in the presence of god they know the joy that they receive they know the players are at his hands forevermore and yet, they, for one reason, they choose to walk back into darkness. But what, what are they returning back to? They're returning to a, a wretched and terrible life. Because that's the life of a sinner. The Bible gives a grabbing instruction of the life of a sinner and it's quite unenviable. It is a life without peace. It is a life without peace. When, when, when we give our life to Christ, there's that peace that we supported on, on, on all understanding that we receive. And, and, and before God left, he was, he was talking about my peace, I live with you. There's a peace that, you know, that even in the midst of, of storms that you receive, you know, when you're in Christ, you are, you are dealing with a lot of issues, but there's, there's that peace that is within you. Because you have the understanding that God is on your side. That is what you are dealing with. You know, there's that peace that, 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 that you have. 
you know, I, 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 I know, I think I gave the testimony sometimes that, you know, there were times, you know, years ago, you know, I worry so much about, you know, views. How do I deal with them? These days, I'm still not. <laughs> I still don't have, have money. <laughs> it locked up in my account, but there's a piece that I have even when I'm dealing with, you know, how to deal with these issues of life. You know, there's that piece I I know I, I feel. And sometimes my wife will say, Maybe I'm too calm for even what, what we are dealing with. How will I not be calm? <laughs> All those of my worry, what, what my worry so, you know. And so there's that life you know, that is without peace when you are not in Christ. Any small issue you are, ah, any small thing, you think your yeah, enemies are after you, you begin to run into that What When we're talking about sin, actually, we're not even talking about those who, uh, actively sinning, you know, there, there, there are those who, who are moralists who have not even given their life to Christ, and there are those who are actively, you know, in, in the business of killing, in the business of stealing. You know, there's a difference, but they are all sinners because uh, they have all not come to the knowledge of Christ. But there's even that piece that eludes even those that is immoralist. That's why you hear people commit suicide who you think they have their lives sorted, they are professors. It is it's a lack of that peace that, that 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 takes them to commit. These are people, you know, by our human definition, they are good guys. You know, they don't do anything bad, but because they don't have that knowledge of Christ, they're not giving their life to Christ. There's a peace that eludes them. And that's why you hear things about suicide and you think and that's why you have people like uh, they, are, they are fighting some demons. And these are not people who are by any stretch of human understanding, bad people. They are good people, but you can be a good person and not even if you don't have Christ, that peace eludes you. It's, 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 it's a life without rest. It's a life without rest. It's a life that is full of pains. That is full of pains. Today you hear people, uh, you know, deal with pains, you know, of yesteryears. And those pains are still heavy on the people. And they've gone to therapy, they've taken drugs. Mm, not that those, those things are not good, you know. Of course, talk to a therapist if you need to, by all means. You know, but <laughs> that, that's, 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 that, that's pain free life that you have when you walk with God. When you are in God, when you give your life to Christ. Is one that can mend broken hearts. You know, there are hearts that have been shattered by several experiences and they struggle with it for life. They go into relationship with those and, and they begin to struggle. They even destroy other people's lives because they cannot heal you. And, and they think all of those therapies are what all of that is like good, but that's 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 there's a healing that comes. That comes when you have you live a life in Christ. That's why the Bible has has called us to the ministry of reconciliation. And, and, and as Christians, we are we are in you know that business. You no, know, when you reconcile your life to Christ and you begin to work with Christ, it begins to perfect your life. It begins to do that work of perfection. All of those pains. You begin to see that you, know, you, deal, you need to deal with them better. Not that those pains will automatically disappear, but you begin to receive strength to, to, to overcome them. It is a life of affliction. In Romans chapter 3, verse 16, Romans chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Destructions and mysteries are in their ways and the way of sinners. Destruction and misery are in their way. You know, people talk about you know, momentary happiness and joy. You know, <laughs> but the joy that we have is 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 in our salvation. It's in our saving in, in that salvation that we receive, and that was, that's 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 what you know, gives us that streams of joy every day. And that's why you see people who are rich and all of those things and they, they fight all sorts of things. 
because that joy of salvation is not within it's not flowing from within If, 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 if you read, I, I think I, I mentioned this some weeks ago about a guy, you know, who, uh, who in, 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 in the true light of his life, the guy died at I think, around 42, if I, call, if I call it now, yes, for, probably 42, 43. And the guy was paying anybody who could give him happiness. And people stole from him. I, I will share the link on, I think, on this platform, you know, sometimes ago. The guy who, was practically paying people to make him happy. He had the money, but there was no happiness. I remember that, you know, a lot of things happen in this tech world, and I, I happen to read their stories. It's one of the, those tech guys, too, who has been spending millions to look like he was 40 <laughs> and he looks more miserable. He's so spending a fortune. The point is, it's a, a life without Christ is a, is a life that is in crisis. And so, you know, let's, I, I don't know why someone who, and, you know, have the knowledge of what a life in Christ is and choose to go back. But people make their decisions every day and they go back. Uh, the children of Israel, you know, Israelites were a prime example of people who, who, are, who are eating manna, who got the rest of them from the hands of Pharaoh, you know, they have that experience of a life with God, and at different points they chose, you know, to worship stones and other gods. And so sometimes we make decisions in our life, and we don't make. We are not conscious of that decision we make. We make decisions about our career without God, and then we begin to put God over it. And then someone who comes to church often now begins to make me services because of a job. Because of, of you know making ends meet, and then you begin to you know slide you know backslide right? without you know knowing it, and that's why it's important for us to be to watch and pray. So the the life you know without Christ, the life without Christ is a life that is full of hardship, it's full of affliction, afflictions of the enemy. Romans chapter 2, verse 9. Romans chapter 2, verse 9. It says, Tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew falls and also of the Greek. Tribulation and anguish. A life without Christ. It's, it's, it's a life that is in crisis. That's why we must hold on very, very, very very tightly, very fast to that salvation that we have. Let's not allow it to slip away from us. And the way it can slip away from us is, is an action and inactions. The life without, without Christ, it's a life, you know, the life of a sinner, the life that is full of mystery, it's full of sorrows. In, 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 in James, uh, James chapter 5, verse 1, James chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Come now, you which weep and howl for your mysteries that are coming upon you. Come now, you which weep and howl for your mysteries that are coming upon you. These are mysteries that the sinner in life without Christ faces. Yes, yeah, some of us might think, ah, well, there are people in the world who, who, who don't have Christ and their, their lives seem to be perfect. You know, mm, often times we ask that question. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 23, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, a verse to please, you can just open your Bible with me as I, I go along. We'll take all of those verses by God's grace. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 23 says, For all his days are sorrowful, and his work bodysome, even in the night, his act takes no rest. This is also vanity. 
you know, I, I, you know, some people spend their life chasing vanity, and you know, it it, it becomes too late for them to realize it. You know, and that day the Lord, you know, thank God, you know, it, it says this more often is his, his own vanity that he was chasing was to to be the, the youngest vice chancellor in Africa, <laughs> and he was going to run with that. But thank God, he, he came very early to that understanding that you know, that's not all that matters. You know, and some of us have things that you know we spend on our all our lives. We put all our energy in today. Those vanities, you know, a good car, you know, big car. This is as good, but they cannot replace God. It, 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 it is wrong for us as Christians, you know, to to abandon the Creator to now she's after the created things. And, and, and some people they just mindlessly run after the vanities of life. And yeah, was Kim Solomon, you know, it, 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 it took him a while to realize, but he came to that conclusion eventually. Uh, all this just vanity. And, and today you see people do, do all sorts of vanity. Yeah, people go on to do BBLs, you know, and, and you go and go on that. So even though there's so that risk of death, and some people, some people don't don't mind it. They just go and take their body to a surgeon, just remove some yeah, and put it there. Of, they are Christians who does all of this, and they are so en- engrossed in all of these vanities. You know, probably your your your, your vanity, my vanity is not BB, getting a BBL. It might be you know, you know, it might be driving a big car, and you do anything to get to that point of owning and driving a big car. You know, so maybe, uh, maybe the vanity might even be getting a PhD and you do it at all cost, not minding, you know, what happens. You no, know, they must be careful. You know, you cannot say to be a, the youngest best person in Africa is a bad thing to aim. It's not. But when you make it the all that is, And, and you turn into a vanity. It is dangerous. But the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And so we must be careful. We must be careful as Christians to you know, hold fast you know, to this salvation that we have. It is a life that is full of destructions, a life without Christ, a life of a sinner, the life that is full of destructions that is full of sorrows you know in uh, Isaiah chapter just turn your Bible with me Isaiah chapter 21 verse 4 Isaiah 21 verse 4 says my heart wavered fearfulness frightened me the night for which I longed it turned into fear for me my heart wavered fearfulness frightened me the night for which I longed it turned into fear for me. Some of us, you know, have all sort of ideas lined up in our head. <laughs> all of this can end in disasters. You, you find people, you know, do all sorts of things to get out, you know, of, of a place, of, let's say of Nigeria, that's not a bad thing, but when you don't do it, you know, if it's the will of God, you don't even care it is the will of God, and you tell yourself, "Ah, the Lord wants good for me." You yeah, know, is 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 which for me is that I have an expected ending. <laughs> yeah, no, no way. I don't need to. It it, it has to be His will. Now, why why would God not want me to you know, travel out or to leave? And then people travel out, and then their lives don't turn out the way they expect. Because that was not God's will for their life. But it takes remaining in God, it takes serving God, having a relationship with God to understand His will for our lives. You know, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't, you don't show the plan of your house to every every stranger that you see at your gate. You don't say, "I come and see the please the plan of my house. This is where this is my bedroom. This is where I keep it." No, you you that plan is shown to your confidence. 
So it is when we work with God and have a relationship that we begin to know His mind and His will for us. Isaiah chapter 23, Isaiah chapter 23, uh, verse, verse 12, Isaiah chapter 23, verse 12, uh, says, And he said, You will rejoice no more, O you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon, arise cross over to Sirius, there also you have no rest. There is no rest for the wicked. In this world, there is a lot of challenges that we are going to deal with, but it is when you have Christ, you know, it's when you have Christ that you truly, truly can have rest. Is the God's why is a body bearer. He said, Come on to me. Oh, we labor, you know, full of laden, and I will give you rest. It's that rest that will, that, that, that will you get every other day. It helps us, it helps our infirmities. Even the Holy Spirit intercedes for our behalf. He's a loving father. Why? Because, you know, I. I we serve an high priest who had gone through, you know, came to this world in the form of a man and he understands what we go through. And so he has designed, you know, processes for us, you know, to live a life that is full of rest, a life of peace. A life of peace does not mean a life that has millions in the bank. There are, there are two different things. People can, people can, people can have millions in the bank and not, you know, Sometimes I'm sure you and I probably go to our bed sleep effortlessly. Some people need to take drugs, pills for them to sleep. They need they need pills. They can't just sleep. May God give us more understanding in Jesus' name. So we'll just take a few more of those verbal verses and move to our outline two. Uh Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 67. Deuteronomy 28 and 67 says, In the morning you shall say, Oh, that it we are evening, and at the evening you shall say, Oh, it we are money, because of the fear which terrifies your heart, and because of the sight which your eyes see. You know, it is it is God, you know, working with us to have peace. You know, it's not just like that, that example of that 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 servant of Elisha. You know, when you know the, the those army came and you know he was so he panicked. <laughs> and in the, the prophet said, oh, "Are you panicking? Don't you know those who are for us are more than those these people that are there?" And you know, ask God for to to open his eyes so that he can see the army there were for them. And, and so, when you understand there is an army behind you, that you have victory in Christ, you know it becomes easier. You know, you walk into every battle knowing. Full word that victory is already won. That, that's, that's a confidence booster to know for every battles of life in Christ you are going to win. You are short of victory. And so, you know, people are, are, are feared by what they see. You know, the Bible says when others are saying there's a casting down, you'll be saying there's a lifting up. It's a grace that is available to be saying that. Because when others are saying that they cast that there's what they see, that is that it is what they see that makes them to say, ah, there's a casting down. But because you're 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 not you're not dependent on this, you know, this physical eyes only. This is the spiritual eyes that you have that allows you to see that there's a lifting up for you. That's why it's important for us, you know, to take our salvation very seriously, to guard it jealously. So I doesn't sleep away because these are the things that we, 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 we're going to miss. You know, when we backslide, when we walk back into darkness, may there not be a portion in Jesus' name. So Psalm 38, Psalm 38, verse 8, Psalm 38, <clears throat> verse 8 says, <clears throat> I am feeble and severely broken. I groan because of the turmoil of my heart. I groan because of the turmoil. Of my and again, I've explained a lot of people are rich and their life is just a mess. Dealing with so, I'm not even talking about those who put their hands into what they should not put their hands. I'm even talking about people uh, who are just living their lives because there's not there's no knowledge of Christ there. He 
It's important for us to, 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 to remain in Christ, to remain in Christ and walk in Christ, to walk under salvation uh, with fear and trembling. I think uh, maybe two, two or three more, and then we'll move on. Uh, Job chapter 7, verse 3. Job 7, verse 3. Job chapter 7, verse 3 says, So I have been allotted months of futility, and wearisome nights have been appointed to me. I have been appointed months of futility. May that not be a portion in Jesus' name. We will not walk and, and, not, <laughs> and not prosper in Jesus' name. But that's futility for you to just walk, you know, and not have productivity, you know. And there's there's a grace, you know, for 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 productivity. For you know, people who just walk with their hands and walk and walk and walk, and then there's no nothing to show for it. But there's a grace that we can tap into when we are in Christ, you know, to 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 live to lead productive lives. Uh, may the Lord release that grace unto us in Jesus' name. So, uh, the second half, don't forget we have been looking at uh, the sorrow of a backslider. A backslider is, is someone who, who, who have, you know, you know, leaving the faith or left the faith, you know, someone who is, you know, struggling with the service for God. You know, you begin to, with all the other things you do, you backslide and, you know, you say, ah, let me go back into darkness. You, you, you had been in the lights before and for some reasons you are back in darkness and you you, 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 you you go back to being a slave when you had been a son and daughter and enjoying all of the privileges like i said it's not a rational decision but these are decisions people make every other day these are decisions that people make every other day by their actions New life in Christ is a glorious one. Please join us and stay with us. The life in Christ is a glorious one. Please join us and stay with us. Contrary to the life of a sinner, the, the, the new life in Christ offers you joy. You know, we've been saying all of I mean, you know, you know, uh, this outline is basically the opposite of uh, the first outline. So, you know, but then we will still. Uh, take time to read all, all those verses. That's why I didn't want to go into those Bible verses because I, in, uh, we'll be still going to go to them in the second outline you know, when I was talking about joy and peace and all of the things that we enjoy in Christ that sinners don't enjoy. The contrary to the life of a sinner, the new life in Christ offers joy, peace, hope, victory, comfort, power, reality, to Yeshua, blessings, glory, etc. If you have not tested it, join us today. If you are already in it, stay with us. Don't go back to sorrow. You know, uh, today's teaching is quite, uh, and as God will have it, it is quite, uh, uh, quite direct. And uh, you know, all of us, you know, can understand this. You know, self-explanatory. You know, but but more than you know. Uh, how you know how diet it is it is for us to you know check our lives are there things that i'm grappling with that can cause me to backslide you know people don't just backslide in a day people don't just leave the faith in a day people don't just you know leave the the will of christ in a day it, it, it doesn't just happen in a day it, it's a journey it's a process and that's why we must be watchful so that we don't we don't we don't embark on this journey back into darkness. We don't we don't slip back into darkness. You know, if if, if I mean these days I've been fascinated by aviation and uh, what you know aviation channels. You know, as a pilot, you know you are you know you, the training is for you to maintain a speed certain speed. When you are climbing, you there's a certain speed you maintain. But if so for some reason, let's say, let's say the engine loses power, you, you begin to fall back. If you don't recover very quickly, you, before you know it, you can be on the ground and in ditch and it will be a, a disaster. And, and so you see pilots struggling, 
they'll try to regain the attitude they, they, they wear back. You know, I, I, I was watching one today and, you know, they lost a, you know, from, I think, about 7,000 you know, feet they wear. They, in just about 31 seconds, they, they, they fell into a ditch. It was a very steep descent. So it's a process. And that's why we must be careful so that we can maintain our attitude in Christ. Instead of falling back, we begin to swire higher. We begin to grow in his knowledge and increase in his wisdom. You know, and God begins to reveal things to us, and you know. And you begin to walk and begin to you know enjoy all of the you know the glorious life. And you know, you know, joy, when we talk about joy, it's something that we can abound in. It's not that you just have that joy and that joy is fixed there. You, the joy can grow, it can expand, it can increase. So the joy you have when you come to the knowledge of Christ is not the joy you have when you walk with God for, for months and now years. We are supposed to abound. You know, the Lord will give us more understanding in Jesus' name. So, I will just take some of those verses and uh, 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 those Bible tests you have been given and then uh, we'll move on. Like Again, like I said, uh, today's teaching is quite uh, self-explanatory, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm urging us to, you know, again, do a, a, a search of our lives, you know, and begin to look at, are there things that can cause me to dissent? You know, are, are there things, you know, when when, they are, when when there is a vanity around the corner of your heart, when, when, when there is a vanity, you know that you, you know you, you are so mindlessly pursuing, it, 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 it can't be fatter. And the Lord help us in Jesus' name. So, uh, very quickly, we're we'll going to look at those Bible verses. Uh, there are most of them are, are verses we are quite familiar with. But uh, in the next uh, about eight minutes, we take uh, as many as we can. Uh, these things I've spoken. I'm reading from John chapter 15 verse 11. John chapter 15 verse 11. <clears throat> these things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. That your joy may be full. You know, and I, I know. That in the Lord that the Lord has given us all the kind of joys that I have. There's unspeakable joy, <laughs> you know. There are all kind of joy that we can great joy, you know. There are levels to this, you know. So begin to walk with God. When I begin to walk with God, I begin to grow in joy, you know. I will now get to that very great joy. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So John chapter sixteen, John chapter sixteen, uh, verse twenty-four. John sixteen twenty-four. It says, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you receive that your joy may be full. Again, when we are in Christ, there's that, that fullness of joy that we enjoy. There's a fullness of joy that is our portion as, as members of the bodies of Christ. And may we continue to have that joy in Jesus, and I'm going to even begin to profit and, and, and grow in that joy in Jesus. So in Romans chapter 15, uh, verse 13, Romans chapter 15, uh, verse 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You may abound in hope. And like I said, I think on Sunday, our hope is not just in this world. You know, I hope it's not just in this world. Because if it were, it were so, uh, we, we have been, as the Bible, as, I think, as Paul says, of, of, of most men, the most miserable. But I hope it's not just in of this world. I hope it's also of the life eternal. So, yeah, for Christ in us, the hope of glory, you know, that is important, but there's that hope eternal. In Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, you see clearly, uh, then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send a portion to those for whom nothing is prepared. 
for this day is holy to the Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy is important. You know, that's that's one important thing, you know, the, the, that we enjoy in Christ. I, I remember when, you know, that day, the first uh, time that I asked me to minister, and I think, you know, I talked about living a fulfilled, fulfilled life, you know, and, you know, there are sometimes we think uh, people in our life are going to give us joy. You know, they are telling you, go and marry, you know, you know, people tell you when you get this, you have to, when you do this, when you have your million, when you have this, you know, all of these things cannot give you joy. You know, that's that's a fact. Yeah, momentary happiness, yes. You know, when you graduate and you are wearing your robe, yeah, you feel that happiness in you, but that's it's not joy. All of these achievements in life, you know, you find people. I flyers and they are still miserable. And they still, you know, you know, people still commit suicide. There's, there's one celebrity, celebrity chef, you no, know, high flying guy, as much as one could see, he was a good guy. And then someday we just had a committed suicide. And this was an award winning guy. There was one uh, guy who was uh, one professor was was a professor at at Princeton. You know, he was even he was only the, the chair of U.S. President's Economic Advisors. You know what it means for you to be you know a, an economic chair at Princeton. You know, in the U.S. we have what they call the Ivy Ivy League schools, the top schools. You are not just a professor; you are a chair, and then the president finds you worthy and makes you what makes you the share of his advisors of economic advisors yeah no on that team you have the best the cream de la cream how they used to say it the be- best of the best the one percent of the one percent of academic you know economists and yet he died by suicide the guy who was deemed to be a well-rounded guy the point is this you know we can chase a lot of things, you know, and those things, you know, we think will, will, will give us joy. But the joy that we can have, the source of joy, is in, this, is in the salvation, the saving grace. That's why the Bible says, the joy of the Lord is my strength, is your strength. So I don't know what you are chasing after that you think <clears throat> will give you joy. Maybe you think, ah, let me just get that PhD. Let me just, you know, get that job. Let me just, you know, buy that car. Let me just move into my house. You're wrong. Sadly, so you're wrong. Because those things are not going to give you joy. Let's 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 stop looking for joy in the wrong places. Some of you think. Ah, when I have kids, my own kids, I'm, I'm miserable now because I don't have my own kids. I mean, I have people who have kids who come to suicide. You know, when I, just one, just one baby, I, 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 I would, my head will start be like, my this, oh, you're wrong. And you know, people even get their self worth from people and things. You know, you know the people feel. They, they feel okay about themselves because I've achieved, achieved that. Not, not remembering our insufficiency as, as man. That all of these things doesn't make us sufficient. You know, I, I'm taking time to you know, just point out this is because this, this teaching is quite direct. But I just wanted to you know, stir up our hearts so that perhaps, you know, we are, we are doing the wrong things. Perhaps, you know, we are looking for joy in the wrong places. And, and, and the way, you know, to, to, to lead fulfilled lives, to have to experience that life is, is to have Christ. A life without Christ is a life that is in crisis. Of course, 
I, your spouse, your spouse, you know, even God instituted that 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 that, that you know, not founded that institution of marriage. So it's important. It's, it's good, but to think that is that is what will give you joy it's, it's, it's a fallacy. And and that's why you have to teach today, like. Uh, People get married today, and two months down the line, they say they are, they are divorcing because I I no longer feel happy in the home. And people they bought people to go and dance and eat months ago, and there was so much you know happiness in the room. They probably rented the finest hotel, bought the best band, and played and spread money and ate and drank, you know. And six months down the line. You know, and people will tell you why did you? Uh, I, I was, I was, I, I just, I, I, I agreed the marriage. I was no longer feeling joy, happiness. <laughs> that is that people say. You read online, you hear things, you read things. These are things that happen. But that, that, that's an example of someone who probably married for the wrong reasons. Who, think, who thought getting married would give him joy? So it's important for us to seek God. That's, that's a source of joy. And focus on Jesus, you know, love him and test for more of him. So I'll just take uh, a few more verses. I, I know that we're familiar with some of these verses, so I just took time to uh, just charge us up uh, in uh, Psalm chapter, uh, uh, let's take First John chapter 4, First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. It's important for us to know what we carry. When we know what we carry, we begin to you know exercise our authority. Uh, there, there, there are times, you know, as Christians, we don't know the authority that they that has been invested in us. And yet they, they behave as if they have, they have no authority at all and they just surrender to the enemy. It's important for us to know what we carry. And the way to know what we carry is when you study the world, when you come for sessions like this, and we encourage ourselves, we have this iron, sharpened iron, you know, and, and we dwell on the world and we study in the world, you know, we need to have more knowledge of what we carry. In, in, in Psalm 34, verse, verse 10, it talks about the young lions shall, shall lack and suffer hunger. But look at them just read it. Young lions lack and suffer hunger. For those who seek the law shall not lack any good thing. When you know the promises of God, I, I was reading some weeks ago and and some theologians theologians said there were seven thousand promises in the bible so how many of those promises do you know how many of those promises do you don't and his words are ye and amen is the god that honored his word even more than his word his name and so how many of those promises do i know and then i and i think i was sharing some days ago that I, Anytime I come across a, a promise I like, I just quickly put it inside my note. I have a note on my phone. Okay, I like this promise. So I quickly note it down. And so and I try to put it in section. So promise on joy, promise on provision. I try to say so I'm just giving tips like that. So maybe you can copy my style. That's fine. So when I'm dealing with issues, I know where to go to to go and we are show myself in the world. If you can know as many as we can offer, that's fine. But sometimes, you know, having a small place we can, you know, peep into and the assured ourselves is also good. There are 7,000 promises of God on safety, on provision, on abundance, on peace, on the things that we, we deal with on daily basis. The things we, we deal with, they are promises for us. Well, it, if you, it is when you know the word that you, you are aware of these promises that you can claim those promises. It's important for us again to, you know, if you're already in Christ, you know, if, 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 you know, 
you're already walking with Christ. Don't please don't go back. And that's why our daddy is, 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 is pleading with us today. Don't go back to sorrow. Don't go back to sorrow. Let's just take a few more <clears throat> verses and uh, uh, we'll begin to pray. John chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, uh, 33 says, This thing I have spoken to you that you may have peace in the world, you have tribulations, will be of good share of overcome the world. That promise for us that in respect of what we are dealing with, victory is ours. Victory is ours. Victory is ours. In, in John chapter 14, John chapter 14, if you start, uh, <coughs> please be please. John chapter 14, if you start from verse 1, say, Not let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God and believe also in me. In my father's as are many mansions. If you are not so, I will not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and receive you to myself that where I am, there also you may be also. You know, so when we when we know all of this, this assurance that it is what we are dealing with in this world, there's a better place that God is preparing ahead for. And, and it helps us to enjoy all of this hardship. You know, and last week we were, I mean in the last few weeks, months, and weeks, yeah, weeks we've been looking at don't be left behind. This is this one promise that can keep you going because you know there's a better place for you. And so what you need to do is is for you to hunker down and double down Jesus. Double down on Jesus. And you know because there's a better place that is going to create for you. And then when you are in Christ and you, know, you tarry with him, you will inherit that place as well. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, it talks about blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And there are blessings that we receive, spiritual blessings, even physical blessings that we receive because of our membership of the body of Christ. And that's what qualifies us for that, those, those blessings. His mercies are new every morning, daily, every day. He loses us with his benefits. Those benefits are not for those who are not in Christ. There's, 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 there's a grace that is available to all, the common grace. But there's a grace that's available for, for the select. That, that grace that teaches us. There are blessings that we receive. There are gifts that <clears throat> it, it, it releases unto us. Uh, finally, let's take uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. We're just uh, rounding up now. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. To them, God will to make known our what? To them, God will to make known what are the riches of glory to the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the whole of glory. Christ in you, Christ in me, the whole of glory. I, I hope. Uh, our hearts have been lifted up this evening. I hope uh, there are bodies there. Those, those posted bodies have been lifted. You know, uh, the words of God are reassuring. You know, perhaps you are, you are grabbing with things that can take you off the path of Christ. Uh, this word is for you today. To tie with God, to tie with Jesus. You know, uh, victory, has been prom- victory has, it has been promised us because the one in us is greater than he who is in the world. Like I said, you know that 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 servant had to had have his eyes opened to see, you know the the, the 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 forces that were behind them. He was panicking, and you know. And the thing is, it is when we, we, we take our eyes off Jesus, you know, partly because we think we are self-sufficient in ourselves, that we begin to sink. As yes, I want to encourage us this evening to fix our gaze fully. Let's, let's not let's not be distracted. You know, a dog can back and you want to see what is happening there. And before you know it, you take your eyes off Jesus. You know, Peter probably told, you know, you know, 
Jesus, you know, thank you for for holding my hand, but I think I'm okay. You know, I, I let me take my eyes off you. I can walk on my own now. And in the moment he took his eyes off Jesus, he began to sing. To sink. Because I mean, it's human to think we are self-sufficient, but it takes that knowledge, you know, to know that we are only complete in Him. We are only sufficient in Him. And all of this is to encourage us to remain. In our work, you know, we remain in our work with Christ. Can we just, you know, by our hearts now and just begin to think of is there is there any way that you are you are going off track? You know, things you are struggling with that that is is decreasing your your devotion. The, you know, the love you have, the, the the energy you you spend for for Christ, we have been much to spend and be spent, and probably you used to do that before, but these days we are. Just, I keep doing the same thing, full saying, doing the same thing, you know, and expecting the different result is insanity. Let me try something else. Let me, let me put my energy somewhere else. And I don't know, perhaps you are dealing with that and say, ah, enough of putting all my energy here yeah, in one basket. Yeah, let me, you know, duplicate this energy. Perhaps that is just me to think. I don't know. Maybe you used to be song that was fervent for God, fervent in your in your prayer life, fervent in your devotion with God. And these days, it's a struggle to even you know have your quiet time. You struggle to even pray. Just begin to search your heart and begin to ask for grace. The grace, the grace, the sustaining grace. We, we, we talked about sustaining grace in in a, in a, in a Sunday school weeks ago. Begin to ask for the sustaining grace. The grace for you, you know, to walk with God, not to get the grace you know, to just hang in there and begin to, you know, you know, bubble down on Jesus. The grace to die, the grace to going to walk in obedience. We ask for that grace. The grace to begin to, you know, do His will. The grace, you no, know, to understand that sufficiency is of Him. I'm going to ask for that grace of sufficiency. It's 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 a grace that we can receive. Begin to ask for the grace. The grace, you no. Know, to, to, to begin to walk with God until the end. Not begin to ask for strength. Perhaps you are weary, tired of this life journey, and you know, a lot of things, you know, all your views, all of those things are weighing down. Ask for the grace. Our God is a burden bearer. Ask for the grace. Ask for the grace to tarry with Him. Ask for the grace. Ask for the strength. The Bible says there's strength for those who wait upon the Lord. Ask for the strength. Perhaps you are really saying, Lord, strengthen me in my in, in, in my service to you. Strengthen me, Lord. I'm weary. God, strengthen me. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Last of all, I want to thank you for this hour. Thank you for this evening. Thank you for your word that has come at a time, a time where people are tired, a time where people are weary, a time where people are contemplating, you know, Putting their hands on the plow in time when people you know, are looking for shortcuts. Thank you for your word that has come to reassure us of your love for us. That has come to reassure us, you know, you know, of the things that we are enjoying. You the joy, the peace, the love, the hope that I only found in you. Thank you for your word that that I hear. Amen. Father, for as many people that need strength, you know, release your strength unto them, Lord, in Jesus' name. For as many people are struggling, come and give them your sustaining grace in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering prayer. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.